welcome to this edition of Learning with Human Kinetics. My name is Aaron and today I'm going to discuss the importance of training as we age. Now, when we think of training, a lot of the discussion uh, has pointed toward youth training or sports performance training, uh, but there is a, uh, plenty of conversation to be had about training beyond our competitive days. <clears throat> and I know not everyone is competitive, uh, a competitive athlete, and some of you maybe have never played sports, but for the sake of health and longevity, it's important to exercise regularly, and I will get to uh, mo the most important reasons today. Uh, according to the 2020 census, the population of the United States was just under 331.5 million. Now that includes 149 million people, or roughly 45% of the population aged 30 to 64. That means about 38% are newborns up to 29 years old, and about 17% uh, aged 65 and older. Now why is that 30 to 64 age group so significant? Of course, we all stri strive to be healthy in our 50s and 60s near retirement age so that we can fully enjoy that time of our lives. Uh, but the crucial age we can, should consider is 30. This is, unfortunately, the age when we all start to see a decline in performance. Even the most elite, high-performing high athletes experience a decline uh, around that age. Think about the NFL, for example. Those athletes are strong, powerful, explosive, and athletic. But nearly everyone, maybe with the exception of Tom Brady, sees a decline when they hit 30, <clears throat> and that is usually the beginning of the end of their athletic careers. Now, imagine how strong and healthy they are, uh, having trained their entire lives at a high level, yet they still see a natural decline. Compare that to someone who doesn't train as intensely, and maybe not at all on what their decline might look like in that case. According to a study in August 2022, only 29.4% of adults aged 35 to 49 met the recommended physical activity guidelines, and only 21.6% of adults aged 50 to 64 met the recommended guidelines for their age group. Um, reasons for not meeting those guidelines typically point to lifestyle changes. Think about how life changes for most of us uh, in the early 30s. That's usually the age when priorities might change in terms of focusing uh, much more on a career. Uh, not all, but um, a lot of people around that age might be preparing for marriage and starting a family. Life can be tough and it can feel crowded and busy. And when that happens, exercise and diet are typically uh, the first to be sacrificed. Um, but the question is, why do we see a decline? Um, are there issues deeper than lifestyle issues? For non-pros, there is still a decline in performance in terms of doing simple activities of daily living. Uh, there are many reasons and maybe deeper causes depending on overall health, but among the leaders is sarcopenia. In the simplest terms, sarcopenia is a loss of muscle mass and strength. Evidence has revealed that after the age of 30, there's a decrease in cross-sectional areas of individual muscles, uh, but also a decrease in muscle density, uh, reductions in tendon compliance, and an increase in intramuscular fat. Beginning at the age of 30, uh, the body naturally begins to lose muscle mass. Uh, for those who are physically inactive, muscle loss can continue at a rate of 3-5% to 5 each decade. Now, most accounts that I've seen uh, point to a 3% decrease for women and a 5% decrease for men. For men and the larger de uh, degree of decline, much of that has to do with decreasing testosterone levels. Um, a loss of muscle mass also means a loss in strength and eventually power. So imagine if, you're, uh, if you stay physically inactive and don't do any type of strength training in your 20s, you might be okay as far as body composition, assuming your diet is on track, uh, but definitely not as strong as someone who trains regularly. Uh, as you approach your late 20s and finally hit 30, uh, your muscle mass will start to decline. So now, already having limited muscle mass and less strength, you begin to lose uh, both at a much quicker rate. Now, a study published in 2017 showed that part of the participants in the study uh, the mean total lean body mass for males aged 21 to 25 was 58 kilograms or 127 pounds and 31.6 kilograms or 69 pounds for females. The results showed a drop in lean body mass all the way down to 50 kilograms for males and 30 kilograms for females in the 36 to 40 age group and down to 44 kilograms for males in the 61 to 65 age group. 
Now, interestingly, uh, women hovered around that 30 kilogram mark for all age groups. Now, this could be because males naturally uh, carry more lean mass than females through their teen years and beyond. Uh, but don't let the limited decline in muscle mass for females be misleading. Um, now, even though the loss in muscle mass for females didn't look as significant in that particular study, uh, another study, however, concluded that 40% of women aged 55 to 64 were unable to lift 10 pounds. Now, think about that. That's a pretty alarming statistic and points to the importance of staying physically active. Not being able to lift 10 pounds could mean in some cases you can't go shopping on your own or do regular household chores that you might want to do. Even worse, imagine being a grandparent in your early 60s and not being able to pick up or hold your baby grandchild. Now, that alone should be motivation to start or continue strength training. Now, a little bit of a side note, uh, I had a client in a similar situation about 10 years ago whose only goal in coming into train was to be able to play with her grandkids. Uh, she wanted to pick up and hold the newest baby in the family, uh, and for the older one, she simply wanted to be able to get up and down off the floor without help uh, to play with her grandkids. So that's exactly what we worked on. Uh, part of a regular workout was practicing standing up from a seated position on the floor or sometimes that tall kneeling position. Um, we eventually added a little bit of weight uh, until she was holding 20 pounds in each hand and standing up only using her legs. So no leaning on something, no pushing off of a chair, bench, or table, only using the strength in her legs. Now another client in her mid-70s uh, comments all the time about how she takes for granted uh, things that are tough for her friends to do. Now, something as simple as getting out of her seat at a college basketball game is a struggle for some of her friends, but it's natural for her and seems almost just as easy as it was 40 or 50 years ago. Having said all that, a frequent line I hear most often, um, and this is from clients of every age, uh, usually from their 50s and older, is, I wish I had started strength training sooner. Uh, I've also heard that from clients in their 30s, uh, but the point is, after getting started, they realize how much strength they had lost over the years and how important it is to continue gaining strength. Uh, one woman in her late 50s, early 60s, felt so accomplished when she was traveling for work uh, and was able to get her luggage in the trunk of a rental car on her own uh, without any extra help. Uh, she said she felt like Wonder Woman. I thought that was a little funny, but she had never been able to do it before. But after making a commitment to strength training, uh, she was able to increase her lean muscle mass and overall strength and felt a little more independent while traveling. Um, it's the normal activities like that that many of us take for granted and we lose out on by not training and working to continue to get stronger as we age. So now muscle mass and strength aren't the only areas where we see a decline. Uh, the reduction in size and number of muscle fibers also leads to the decrease in the ability to produce power. Um, in comparison, power usually fades quicker than uh, muscle strength. So think about the number of things we do daily that require a certain level of power, like pushing or pulling a door open or close, uh, or even climbing up stairs. It might not sound super obvious, but the level of force production needed to push off and climb up to the next step um, requires a decent amount of power, but it's something that most of us take for granted. Now, I'll go back to that client in her mid-70s. Now, she can easily walk up and down stairs because she works on strength and power training uh, two to three days per week, uh, whereas her friends who don't do any type of extra training struggle a little and would rather take the elevator. Now, there's nothing at all wrong with taking an elevator, um, but if the overall goal is to stay independent and not reliant on people as we age, then it's important to keep doing simple tasks like that as long as we can. Uh, so I've talked a lot about losing muscle mass and strength and power, uh, but what about bone density? Um, osteopenia is defined as a loss of bone mineral density that weakens bones. Um, it's most common in people 50 years and older and especially in women. So osteoporosis is considered a bone disease that develops when bone mineral density and bone mass decreases or when the quality or structure of bone changes. So as you can imagine, um, this increase increases the risk of broken bones and fractures as well. Now people typically reach their peak bone mass by the age of 30, um, and then just like muscle mass and strength, the ability to create new bone mass slows, and people tend to lose bone mass much more quickly 
then they're able to create it. So factors that contribute to osteopenia and eventually osteoporosis that can't be changed are things like age, um, race, you know, people who are white or of Asian descent are said to be a much greater risk of osteoporosis. Uh, family history plays a role and body frame size also plays a role. Now, men and women who have smaller body frames tend to have a higher risk because uh, they might have less bone mass uh, to draw from as they age. Hormones and diet also play a role. Uh, for example, if you have an eating disorder or have low calcium intake, um, you'll be more likely to develop osteoporosis. Uh, obviously, having a healthy diet, especially with adequate calcium and vitamin D intake, will help prevent osteoporosis. Now, most of us have been taught from an early age the importance of calcium in your diet, uh, whether that's from milk or another source. And vitamin D is crucial because it improves the uh, body's ability to absorb that calcium. So, and as you can probably guess, uh, with, a, with this particular discussion, another way to prevent osteoporosis is exercise. Um, exercise can help you build strong bones and slow uh, bone loss. Strength training or weight-bearing exercise helps increase bone density, especially in the legs, hips, and spine. And one of the best appreciated cards, uh, speaking on this, uh, one of the best appreciated cards or notes that I ever received from a client explained uh, that his doctor was shocked when uh, he saw the results of a recent bone scan and how much bone density uh, had increased. So this guy was in his early 60s and had done a mix of office works and man manual labor throughout his career. Uh, he retired and became sedentary by definition uh, for a short time before he came in to train. Uh, he realized the importance of strength training and how it would help him overall in his retirement. Uh, but for the sake of longevity, he knew that it was something he needed to do. Uh, we focused on pure strength and hypertrophy gains, um, and the results were pretty clear at his checkup that all of his hard work was paying off. So muscle mass, strength, power, bone density um, might be the most obvious reasons to train, uh, but neuromuro, neuromotor factors, excuse me, become even more crucial as we age too. Um, this mainly affects older people in terms of risking falls, which can lead to bone fractures. Uh, research shows that regular physical activity can be effective in improving neuromotor function. Uh, more specifically, a regular structured and progressive resistance training program can not only help in this area, um, but also improve balance and flexibility, uh, increase strength and power, and increase bone mineral density. I'd say regardless of your age, uh, you should include unilateral or single leg and single arm work in your training. Uh, as well as tissue strengthening and balance. Um, all of those combined will help not only strength, but balance and staying re resilient. Now, while we see decreases in strength, power, endurance, muscle mass, muscle fiber size, uh, metabolic capacity, um, resting metabolic rate, and bone mineral density, resistance training has proven to increase all of those. Um, likewise, the seeming inevitable increase in body fat as we age that we might see, um, assuming physical activity levels go down, can be decreased with resistance training. Now, there are plenty of studies and anecdotal evidence uh, that support the idea of resistance training over cardio-only approach um, as the best way to decrease fat, body fat. So all of this is important uh, and can help slow the aging process, but the aging process unfortunately can't be completely reversed. So in other words, you won't become another Benjamin Button by exercising excessively. Uh, the American College of Sports Medicine's position stand does, however, stress the importance of physical activity. It specifically states, quote, although no amount of physical activity can stop the biological aging process, there is evidence that regular exercise can minimize the physiological effects of an otherwise sedentary lifestyle and increase active life expectancy by limiting the development and progression of chronic disease and disabling conditions. Uh, there's also emerging evidence for significant psychological and cognitive benefits accruing from regular exercise participation by adults. It goes on to say that ideally exercise prescription for older adults should include aerobic exercise, muscle strengthening exercises, and flexibility exercises. All of those are important and any type of physical activity 
uh, is going to help, but consider the multiple benefits of resistance training and the factors that were just discussed. Um, by including resistance training uh, into your training plan, you will build muscular strength, uh, build some of that muscle mass back that you'll inevitably lose through sarcopenia, um, increase bone density, and decrease body fat. Now, I would highly recommend, if you don't have it already, uh, getting a copy of Ageless Intensity by Pete McCall. Uh, in the book, Pete discusses the anti-aging benefits that come from high-intensity interval training. Now, he states that one risk of aging without regular exercise is developing chronic health conditions like heart disease, obesity, and type 2 diabetes. Um, when you work at higher intensities, muscle met uh, muscles metabolize carbohydrates, specifically muscle glycogen, to produce ATP. And one important benefit of exercise during the aging process is maintaining efficiency of carbohydrate metabolism of muscle cells. He cited a study by, uh, or from Ball State University that found that adults in their 70s who maintain a high level of fitness throughout their lifespan had enzyme levels uh, similar to adults many years younger. The significance of this is that performing high-intensity exercise consistently through the aging process could help metabolize carbohydrate uh, more efficiently and reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes. Um, high-intensity interval training is uh, also important in reducing the risk of heart disease. Uh, he goes much more in depth in this book, so I definitely recommend checking out Ageless Intensity. Uh, he actually has another book called Smarter Workouts uh, that is filled with, you know, exercise and workout ideas uh, that work especially well for people with limited time or limited equipment. Um, and he just released a third book with Human Kinetics called Smarter Recovery, uh, where he lays out the importance of recovery and gives demonstrations and recommendations on what to do. Um, now, when you're going through your, your strength training, definitely um, any type of, you know, elastic bands, um, any type of, you know, dumbbells, kettlebells, anything like that that's going to provide extra resistance um, in a safe way, if you're ready for that ex external resistance, will help in uh, everything that I mentioned, increasing uh, muscle strength, increasing bone density, um, everything along those lines. So there are many other resources uh, that you can check out and research, um, and there's research to back the claims that exercise is crucial in slowing the aging process, as well as the importance of continuing to stay active as you age. Uh, for many of you, you might not need to be convinced that this is true. Uh, for you, you might only need a little extra motivation or ideas on things to do. Um, if you're starting to see the effects of aging, especially in terms of loss of muscle mass, loss of strength or power, uh, or you found out that your bone mineral density is starting to decline much quicker than you realize, I would suggest that find a professional in your area um, to help guide you through the training process. Um, and you can also, like I said, check out any number of the books on our website. Um, you can also find additional tips, ideas, and information uh, by following our various social media channels, uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. Um, and make sure to subscribe to our newsletters. Uh, for this specific topic, I would recommend our fitness newsletter or our strength and conditioning newsletter. So I, I hope this helped express the importance of uh, training as you age and the various hurdles that you'll inevitably uh, find yourself crossing. So I Thank you all for watching and until next time, I'll see you later.